put any question on the motion. The second and the third members' motions, these are two motion debates with no legislative effect. I have accepted the recommendations of the House Committee, that is the movers of motions each may speak, including reply for up to 15 minutes, and have another five minutes to speak on the amendments. The movers of amendments to a motion each may speak for up to 10 minutes, and the mover of amendment to amendment and other members each may speak for up to seven minutes. I'm obliged to direct any member speaking in excess of the specified time to discontinue. Second member's motion. Urging the government to eradicate cutter oil and take the lead in supporting biodiesel. Member who wish to speak in the motion debate will please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Paul Chair to speak and move the motion. Mr. Paul Chair, Mr. Deputy, we have just handled two motions relating to uh, futures, debentures, and, and uh, stocks, and also the regulation of uh, first hand sales of uh, residential properties. Investment is important, but what is m more important than health and uh, food that we consume? We have an, a, num uh, a lot of controversy about a formula of milk, and um, our compatriots on the mainland are, all, are equally concerned about food safety. I want to uh, put forth uh, two points. First, uh, don't do anything to others that you don't want to be uh, done to. And second, I would like to uh, turn something harmful into something useful to the benefit of all. In Hong Kong, we have 10,000 restaurants. Annually, we produce many uh, waste oil. We like to. We Chinese want to uh, cook with oil, uh, fried food. All restaurants would use or produce uh, waste oil, uh, oil to, uh, used to fry food up to 200 degrees, and with uh, nutrients uh, damage. Uh, there are also two thousand. To 22.8 million litres of uh, waste uh, cooking oil. How is it treated? How is it disposed of? For most restaurants, uh, the, such oil is collected by a contractor. And what is the uh, next stop for the such oil? About uh, 10 million litres will be exported. In 2012, according to government statistics, most of them went to Spain, one million, Germany, one million, Taiwan, one million. More importantly, apart from the one, uh, 10 million liters, another 13 uh, million liters uh, are account unaccounted for. Some would uh, be called by another name as a second a second hand good to the mainland perhaps and about 8.7 million liters uh, cannot be accounted for so what would happen to the 11.3 million dollars when they are uh, when uh, it's shipped to the mainland well, they are reputable the recycler, and there are uh, smaller operators, recyclers, who would uh, collect uh, used oil and uh, treat it with uh, some uh, method and uh, export the stuff to the to the mainland. The cost is uh, just five to six dollars per liter, but uh, the export price to the mainland is about twelve to thirteen. Uh, dollars per liter. After treatment, after purification and uh, sieving of the impurities, uh, the oil is uh, then put back for sale. Some would only be used on the mainland, but I cannot uh, rule out the possibility that the through various illegal channels uh, is uh, shipped back to Hong Kong. Last year, at the end of last year, we were concerned about whether gutter oil appeared in Hong Kong. There were a lot of there was a lot of panic. Some restaurants were suspected of uh, using gutter oil, 
business drops significantly. So we all know the uh, dire consequences when uh, such uh, an incident happened in Hong Kong. If it's waste, we have the waste disposal legislation to deal with the uh, export and other matters. And actually, the mainland uh, does not allow the importation of such waste uh, unless it, uh, there's a license. But people would um, put up all sorts of uh, excuses and call it not uh, by the name of waste oil, but by as a, a second-hand uh, commodity. So it's not subject to regulation by our laws or international convention. On the 13th of February last year, I asked a question about the breakdown of, uh, statistics. Well, I'm afraid that according to the written reply, there is no such breakdown statistics. On the 23rd of January, I also asked a question. I'm glad that uh, uh, we have two the bureau secretary here, uh, secretary for the environment and the uh, secretary for food and health. I hope uh, their presence will enable a more comprehensive response uh, from the administration. Why is this problem r remain unresolved? Oh, it's because of the uh, benefit involved. There are businessmen who can use the uh, waste oil to, in legitimate uh, manners. They are not able to offer good prices to collect waste oil. And they are also subject to various air pollution and water pollution uh, laws. They have to get uh, a license. And also they have to the pay a, a, a tax for the uh, alcoholic content of uh, their waste. And in other countries, they provide a subsidy to recyclers. So things are more difficult, uh, comparatively speaking, in Hong Kong. Look at our neighboring, country, neighboring countries. Because of foot and mouth disease, the UK Uh, and uh, some uh, diseases involving the livestock uh, were uh, detected. Therefore, they have a strange, stringent requirements on uh, handling and disposal of uh, waste cooking oil. So there are uh, regulations on uh, disposal collection of uh, waste oil, waste cooking oil, and they cannot do things uh, that we are doing in Hong Kong. And they also have a tracing system. There are stringent requirements so that parties involved in uh, collecting or disposal, disposal of uh, oil uh, would have to make us reports available. Many people in Hong Kong think that the regulatory system is found wanting on the mainland. Uh, well, that may be the case uh, to some extent, but major cities in the Fujian or major cities like Shanghai uh, have adopted administrative measures to start to regulate the uh, handling of uh, waste cooking oil. And uh, well, uh, for serious uh, breaches, uh, the penalty can be death. It's the cook. It's the lunchtime. I hope you won't mind my mentioning this. This uh, bottle of oil looks uh, terrible, but it's unlike what we really see. Uh, normally, we can see secret buzz and other things uh, which are really harmful. So how can we handle the problem? In the first half, I want to expand the principle of uh, not doing anything to other people where you don't want to be uh, done to. We should regulate the uh, collection of uh, waste cooking oil and uh, the use that uh, is put to and uh, all sort of uh, transform transformative uh, processes should be uh, regulated. We don't want to have uh, oils uh, missing in action, so to speak. After the oil is collected, what should be done? 
a few years ago, uh, that is uh, 2005, we already had legitimate uh, recyclers who can turn the cooking oil so collected into biodiesel, a beneficial product. It's uh, usually it's, uh, the percentage is 5%, so it's called B5 biodiesel. The government has recognized that uh, this, uh, th this comprises of our environmental protection legislation. And in uh, some years ago, uh, pilot schemes were launched to use B5 biodiesel uh, in certain government departments. However, uh, the the number of uh, government departments using B5 biodiesel is uh, small. We have uh, DS, uh, DSD, the police force, and the CSD among the departments, and they are not using a lot. Uh, DSD is 39 uh, percent, police are 7 percent, and then uh, another department 60 odd percent. Uh, potentially, FEHD, the HA, FSD can use uh, biodiesel, but so far the fig percentage for them is uh, zero. But if they can use this, they can use large quantities. Secondly, uh, apart from uh, regulating the disposal of uh, used or waste cooking oil, we should also turn such waste into beneficial products. Apart from uh, turning, turning it into fuel, which is of course good uh, for environmental protection, biodiesel compared with uh, common diesel or fossil fuels uh, is much more friendlier to the environment. Whether we're talking about nitrogen dioxide, particulates, and sulfur dioxide, the emission levels will be much lower. Uh, people are very concerned about pollution and uh, climate change. In other countries, such as the U.S. The, uh, and in EU and Asian countries, they have started to turn B5 diesel into B10 biodiesel. If we do our sums, B5 biodiesel costs about 1% uh, than uh, fossil fuels. That's just a very small mar a difference. If uh, the government uh, Promotes the use of B5 these about these so uh, a little spending will be needed, but we will be able to promote the uh, industry, the recycling industry, to turn cooking oil into biodiesel. But there are difficulties. For example, uh, there is a uh, a tax on uh, alcoholic content, so cost in Hong Kong is higher. Other countries are also providing a subsidy to their biodiesel manufacturer. For example, in the U.S., is uh, that the subsidy is a uh, one dollar per gallon. EU countries are seventy U.S. cents per liter. Australia thirty cents. Switzerland one dollar per liter. That's why they have they their business environment is better than ours. The pilot project ended in 2012, and then we have to start to discuss the way forward in 2013. We should do something that would help local recyclers. And since a new contract is required to be signed, we should require that the manufacturer should manufacture biodiesel locally. On the face of it, a little incentive uh, is uh, provided, but uh, the, since the levy on alcoholic uh, content uh, 
is levied. If we do more to help them, we are not going to violate the WTO requirements because other economies are doing it. In so doing, we can turn uh, waste cooking oil uh, into useful biodiesel. I will reserve my speech for the, le and the second part. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Mr. Paul Chair be passed. Mr. Wong Kok Heng, Mr. Tommy Jung, and Mr. Stephen Ho wish to move amendments to this motion, while Mr. Frankie Yik wishes to move an amendment to Mr. Wong Kok Heng's amendment. This council will now proceed to a joint debate on the motion and amendments. I will call upon the above members to speak in the uh, order as stated, but they may not move amendments at this stage. Mr. Wong Kok Heng. Mr. Deputy, the gutter oil incident became a matter of concern, a matter of public concern. At a meeting of the F, uh, Food Safety and Environmental Hygiene on the 3rd of uh, January, a motion was uh, passed urging the government to amend the law expeditiously to regulate the BAP contents to safeguard the uh, uh, safety of our cooking oil. The motion does not have any binding effect. But the administration is uh, urged to the, take on board the testing of BAP in its regular surveillance program. As for oil, the bottling business uh, is now regulated. In the past, it wasn't. There are some remaining uh, problems. There is no regulation of uh, collection of waste cooking oil. And at present, we allow problematic uh, cooking oil to be shipped back to the mainland. Uh, this carries certain degrees of risk. Mr. Deputy, according to some green groups, uh, our restaurants in Hong Kong produce 22 million liters of waste cooking oil. A half will be re-exported, but recycling only accounts for about 10 to 15 percent of the total amount. At present, Recycling of uh, waste cooking oil is not subject to any regulation. At most, we can say that there is some regulation of uh, turning waste cooking oil to biodiesel and also the wo workplace uh, environment. Uh, recyclers are not required to be licensed. Anyone can claim to be a recycler and they and can and, and approach a restaurant to collect waste cooking oil. Since there is no cooking oil, we do not know how. Waste cooking oil is disposed of or processed, and uh, we don't know where, where they would go. How many recyclers are there? How much uh, waste cooking oil has been uh, collected and uh, processed? How much is exported to other countries? How much is turned into biodiesel or put to other uses? And how much is not uh, recycled? And how is, is it disposed of? How much is uh, handled by uh, illegitimate uh, traders and uh, transport, transported back to the mainland f for processing as uh, cooking oil or gutter oil? Uh, I think the government should uh, implement a comprehensive uh, regulation system. I have three suggestions. First, there must be a licensing system for waste cooking oil recyclers. We should start with regulation. On uh, some websites, we can identify eight such recyclers, but this is not a list of recognized uh, recyclers. They just get registered with the EPD, and the EPD provide information for public reference. There's no regulation. Second, we know that the uh, price offer for waste cooking oil is on the rise. Therefore, we believe there are illegitimate uh, recyclers uh, resorting to various means to uh, ship waste cooking oil back to the mainland. Therefore, we must, have we must have a licensing system so as to implement a stringent regulation system, and, and, and by so doing, we can uh, regulate the problem as source. Second, there should be a registration system. It's not enough just to have a licensing system. There must be a proper registration system for processing of uh, waste cooking oil. The recycler should uh, get registered and uh, make records available for public, for government's inspection. What should be recorded? First, 
the total amount of uh, cooking oil collected, uh, the source, how much is uh, exported, how much is turned into biodiesel, and so on and so forth. Such information should be accounted for and published on some website for public scrutiny. This will ensure that the processing and recycling of waste cooking oil is done in a transparent manner. And should something untoward happen, we can trace the source of the problem and take appropriate regulatory action. The third suggestion is that under the registration system and the uh, licensing system, there should be a regular random spot check system. Those who breach the rules should be penalized. Mr. Deputy, in some countries and some neighboring countries as well, such as Japan, Korea, Taiwan, they all have a proper system for processing and recycling cooking oil. Mr. Deputy, this is from the Legislative Yuan of Taiwan, uh, the EPD under the Legislative Yuan. The information can be accessible on the web. Since to September 2007, Taiwan has put in place a system to recycle the waste cooking oil. The requirements are very clear. There are few rules. Uh, large chains, uh, restaurants, and um, noodle manufacturers must. It's a mandatory requirement. Ha must hand over waste cooking oil to cleansing teams or recyclers appointed by the administration for uh, report or processing. And uh, decoration is uh, required on the web. This is uh, the information about 2010. Second, Taiwan authorities uh, ask uh, households and w institutions to hand over waste cooking oil to the appointed recyclers so that uh, the oil can be turned into biodiesel. Also, Taiwan authorities ask cleansing teams in various provinces and various counties to report the, num the amount of uh, oil collected and also the products produced so that they can trace the whereabouts of uh, waste cooking oil to prevent uh, abuse or misuse of waste cooking oil. The EPD of Taiwan would also conduct public education and advise people not to uh, pour, not to dispose of cooking oil into public sewers so as to prevent uh, the uh, occurrence of older problems. And uh, they also encourage households to put such oil in plastic, transparent plastic container and uh, freeze such uh, oil before collection by recyclers. And lastly, in the course of public education on the disposal of uh, cooking oil, the, the municipal and county cleaning teams will also provide containers for people to dispose of cooking oil from people and from uh, NGOs. The, the waste cooking oil uh, will be in plastic containers, and such a facility would uh, facilitate collection of uh, waste cooking oil from the general public. So we can see that Taiwan authorities have a comprehensive planning and uh, has, has done a very comprehensive job in educating the public and in uh, re recycling uh, waste cooking oil. We should learn from them. Has the SAL government done a proper job in uh, regulation? We asked, in the past, we asked for statistics. For example, how much cook waste cooking oil would be available for recycling? How much uh, has been collected and how much has been exported? And and there's no statistic, there's no information.
that the administration can provide. So we know that we lag behind in regulating the disposal of waste cooking oil. So I would like to appeal to the Secretary for the Environment and the Secretary for Food and Health, who are both present, that uh, we should no longer allow waste cooking oil to go unregulated. Because cut oil would have a uh, health implication for Hong Kong people, and even if uh, the cut oil is consumed by people in other places, it's still it's all equally not not good. I hope the secretary would uh, respond uh, positively. Mr. Tommy Zhang, Mr. Deputy, I need to declare interest first. I have companies in Hong Kong and outside Hong Kong recovering recovering and recycling um, used um, um, cooking oil. Now, in fact, uh, I um, are, um, uh, uh, so, uh, in fact, I'm always um, cautious, and also I, I seldom I support the government's um, um, increased regulation of the industry. But, um, so you may uh, uh, find it uh, rather surprising that I am asking the government to um, um, exercise control over um, used cooking oil or food establishments. Now, oh, in fact, uh, the term gutta oil means um, used oil uh, or discarded oil recovered from gutters and ditches. But now um, gutta oil is a term which um, covers um, used uh, cooking oil. Now, I'm in fact not too worried about the situation in Hong Kong because under the um, food safety uh, legislation, there is a sound uh, tracing system. Um, at the end of last year, um, there was prominent coverage in the media that there were suspected cases of um, um, use of gutter oil in Hong Kong, and then it was proved that that was um, not the, um, the case. And after assessment, it was concluded that there was um, not too much um, uh, health risk caused to the people of Hong Kong. But then um, I think Hong Kong needs to ensure that the used cooking oil collected in Hong Kong will be used for proper purposes and will not um, re-enter the um, food chain, thus causing harm to people's health. I think we have this um, moral obligation and uh, um, uh, this obligation as um, one place um, in, in the world. In fact, uh, Professor Zhong Nan Shan uh, uh, in uh, early this month um, strongly criticized the um, use of gutter oil in um, Bei uh, uh, when he was in Beijing. It was said that uh, fourteen percent of the um, oil or cooking oil used in um, the mainland was gutter oil. And when I tried to um, recover used oil uh, from overseas, the greatest challenge is how this oil can be um, sent back to the mainland for processing. And, and some say that, in fact, there are people who um, collect uh, used cooking oil from um, eating establishments everywhere, especially the smaller ones, but we don't know where such um, collected used cooking oil has gone. In fact, I have um, on many occasions um, sounded uh, warnings in this council about um, gutter oil, and I've also um, warned um, the industry that they should be vigilant. I'm glad that Mr. Porcher has uh, moved this motion. I support um, our, what he is um, proposing, and that is um, um, as the government. Uh, um, should take the lead. Um, uh, should uh, try to um, um, monitor the uh, recovery and recycling of um, um, used cooking oil, and then biodiesel is uh, generated from such oil for use by uh, buses in the city.
but I don't think uh, um, this can really eradicate the source material of gutter oil, as suggested in Mr. Porch's motion. I understand that concerning used cooking oil, um, the uh, recovery and, uh, recovery price has increased by two or three times. And then with regard to the profit um, from uh, uh, producing biodiesel, uh, that's not attractive. And then we can see that, in fact, the retail price of oil is double the uh, price of biodiesel. And so we can see that in fact, for those who've collected the used cooking oil, it is not likely that they will use the used cooking oil for producing biodiesel. And so at the moment, we do have unscrupulous elements um, collecting used cooking oil at a high price. And so I think what is important is that there should be a tracing system or tracking system or a uh, license um, system um, so that um, uh, establishments can only sell um, co uh, used cooking oil to certain establishments. Um, uh, are recognized by the government. In fact, in Europe, in Texas, they do have a registration system. Early this month, I went to uh, San Francisco in California, and I discovered that in 1995, uh, California uh, implemented the, the inedible uh, cooking grease program. Uh, companies and individuals um, collecting and transporting used cooking oil must um, be registered with the uh, Californian government. This is to make sure that um, uh, the, the source of cooking oil uh, is safe. And anyone who, uh, without approval, um, possesses used cooking oil will maybe find 5,000 US dollars or maybe in prison for up to one year. I understand that um, when the legislation was drawn up, the purpose was not to prevent um, the reusing of used cooking oil for cooking. But I think this is a simple uh, and effective tracking system. And I think um, we should make reference to such a regime. Last year, there was expected cases of use of um, gutter oil. And um, um, uh, um, the the um, the rumors were uh, transmitted by phone and uh, on the internet that certain establishments used gutter oil. Um, so so um, the uh, industry's reputation uh, was harmed. I understand that establishments may have to um, do more with such a registration system. For example, they have to register the uh, whereabouts of the uh, used cooking oil. But I'm sure the public will support such efforts because uh, such efforts will successfully prevent used cooking oil from re-entering the food chain. And then uh, we don't know whether the um, uh, used cooking oil will really be um, uh, used in the mainland for the production of biodiesel. But then I think at least we can encourage reputable est uh, eating establishments and um, uh, biodiesel um, production companies to um, cooperate. Some are worried that the threshold of the um, uh, recycling industry may be raised, and also some are worried that eating establishments may, in order to avoid trouble, just um, dispose of the used cooking oil. And so the Liberal Party uh, is of the view that the food safety ordinance is um, um, commendable. Um, there is uh, no over-regulation of the industry. It's mainly a um, simple tracking mechanism um, done on the basis of um, registration and the keeping of records. So perhaps before we um, enact legislation, we should set up a voluntary tracking system um, based on um, co collaboration between the government and the industry. Um, such a system uh, can be implemented um, quickly. There will be less disruption caused to the industry. So, um, so we think that the um, government should do something to protect the health of Hong Kong people and um, mainlanders. For example, um, we can.
um, have um, uh, people um, or establishments um, 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 swearing to um, uh, transport the used cooking oil um, to um, recycling plants. And I will uh, be most willing to assist. I understand that the EPD and the FEHD do possess information about eating establishments. So we can use this system to track um, the uh, whereabouts of used cooking oil from food establishments. I, um, Sir Deputy, don't have very uh, very strong views about um, uh, the other amendments. I think Mr. Walker Hayes' amendment is quite similar to mine. I think what is important is that before coming up with uh, any measure, the government must consult the stakeholders so as to make sure that the measures will be effective and will not uh, cause too much disruption to the operation of the industry. Mr. Stephen Ho, thank you, Mr. Deputy. I'm grateful to um, Mr. Poche for sponsoring this uh, motion debate. Uh, we are concerned about the basic ingredients for our uh, meals. Oil, together with salt, of sugar, etc., are important, and that's why we are concerned. Uh, not too long ago, the media reported that it was suspected that some eating establishments might be using gutter oil. Uh, it is a kind of uh, illicit uh, recycled cooking oil. As a result, we lacked confidence in the catering industry. Every day, we generate a lot of uh, used cooking oil. When collected and recycled into biodiesel, it will be environmentally friendly. The sulfur content, the RSP, as well as the greenhouse gases would be fewer than fossil fuel. And then its source is animal fat and plant oil, vegetable oil. They can be reduced and they are renewable. Yes, in Hong Kong, there are three uh, producers of biodiesel, but then the utilization rate is on the low side. This is because the government has underestimated um, the importance towards environmental protection as well as the food industry. Therefore, I would like to address the issue from the point of view of recycling industries. I hope that we should have we should develop the local recycling industries. In 2011, there were 9,100. Uh, enterprises in the eating, in the catering industries. We have generated a lot of used cooking oil. We haven't got a proper system to recover the cooked, uh, cooking oil, and it is not a hazardous waste. There is no need to uh, regulate the recovery of the used cooking oil. Given the government's position like this, only 10% of the waste cooking oil has been recovered by the manufacturers of biodiesel. Uh, and then 10 million tons have been uh, exported, and then 8 million um, disappear. We don't know where they have gone, where it has gone. Has it been thrown into the drains, as Mr. Wong Kwok Hin has said? Or would it be like what Mr. Tommy Cheung has said, that it is exported to the mainland? We don't know. But from food safety and environmental hygiene uh, perspective, it is undesirable. Therefore, we should have a proper recycling system. We should have a tracing system. Uh, Mr. Deputy, the DAB is of the view that uh, the tracing system would not be adequate on its own. Uh, after it has been exported, then it all depends on the monitoring on the part of the receiving authority. It will also be subject to the limitations of the notification system between Hong Kong and that place. We may not know the whereabouts of the cooked uh, used cooking oil. So the best way to go about it is to keep it locally so that it should be turned into biodiesel as much as possible. In this way, we can reduce the food safety risk and we can also reduce the carbon emission as a result of importation of fossil fuel and also uh, the need to um, transport the waste oil uh, out of Hong Kong. Um, we only have 20 million liters of uh, used cooking oil when compared with um, the total amount of import 
um, in relation to diesels, I think in Hong Kong we can certainly uh, absorb all the biodiesel generated from the used cooking oil. Of course, the problem is the government hasn't got the policies. In Hong Kong, we have got a an establishment in the eco park producing biodiesel. For the other manufacturers, they don't have a proper plant, and we haven't got a comprehensive system. It is very difficult to collect the waste cooking oil from different um, catering uh, enterprises, and they have to compete with others uh, because others are collecting the waste cooking oil for export to them to the other places. Therefore, the production level of biodiesel is on the low side, and we have little knowledge about it. Except a few major corporations, the majority of the citizens don't actually know what is meant by biodiesel and the advantages. In the year 2012, the government started to procure B5 uh, biodiesel. But then the 16-month uh, contract saw the usage of 3 million litres only. Even for organisations using a lot of um, uh, fuel, like the hospital authority, it is uh, regrettable to see that they don't even they haven't used even one single litre. I think there should be a licensing system for the recycling uh, establishments so that we can trace the whereabouts of the waste oil collected. In this way, we can. Uh, establish a partnership between the catering industry and the recyclers. We should uh, encourage the recycling of the waste cooking oil locally as much as possible for the local market. Mr. Deputy, in my amendment, I have said that we should encourage um, the construction, commercial, industrial sectors to use biodiesel as much as possible. I haven't mentioned the transport industry. This is because um, at a lower temperature, um, the impact will be more prominent. For B5, when applied to automobiles, which require high temperature combustion, in fact, um, the sulfur oxides uh, will increase in terms of the volume of emission. But then for biodiesel, I think it, it has proved to be performing very well. So I think the government can take the lead to work with the transport industry as well as the academia to look at the environmental impact of the use of biodiesel. For biodiesel produced in Hong Kong, we haven't got a large volume. I think the commercial sector and the industrial sector can absorb the biodiesel produced. So I've only mentioned the two of them. But then as much as as far as possible, we should also encourage the transport sector to use the biodiesel as well. Lastly, on behalf of the DAB, I would like to comment on the motion itself as well as the proposed amendments. For the motion itself, it starts with the food safety perspective. It is a f it is said that maybe some of the uh, waste cooking oil may become gutter oil, and then from the environmental uh, industry's point of view, um, the recyclers are not part of a proper system. And as a result, the recycling industry will be affected. The government should be encouraged to solve this problem. So we find it worthy of our support. Wong Kok Heng, Tommy Cheung, and Yik Chi Ming are also making amendments. I think the principle is the same. Recyclers should be licensed. Uh, we should trace the whereabouts of the waste cooking oil. In principle, we support this. But then we must emphasize that the tracing system itself can only be supplementary. The crux of the matter is how we are going to assist the local uh, recycling industries so as to recycle the waste cooking oil collected. Thank you. Mr. Frankie Yick, Mr. Deputy, food safety is a subject that uh, public, the public are very concerned about. The Liberal Party has therefore been urging the government to pay attention to food safety. In December last year, we had an uh, oil processing plant suspected of uh, producing gutter oil to local restaurants. Fortunately, after government investigation, it proved to be just a false alarm. The only problem was the uh, processing 
uh, related problems resulting in quality issues. It was not proved that, that there were un, un, unlawful parties uh, making use of uh, gutter oil to profit and to harm public health. And uh, it's because of the presence of uh, transaction documents, tracing was possible to a producer on the mainland, and the uh, mainland authorities uh, were asked to the assist, and the producer, the manufacturer, was asked to stop the doing the re reprocessing. The Liberal Party thinks that through the existing tracing um, mechanism, we can. Tr we can trace the source of the problem, and this would serve as a certain uh, deterrent. The EPD encourages uh, use cooking oil to be handed over to reputable recyclers, and there's no tracing mechanism that the uh, recovered uh, cooking oil will be used for biodiesel or for some other recycled products. Uh, such as a soap. The administration doesn't know the uh, final destination of the recovered used cooking oil. Uh, there is a loophole. We cannot say for sure that there will be no uh, unscrupulous uh, operators um, turning such oil into gutter oil. As uh, Mr. Tommy Chung said, we cannot just take care of our own interests and ignore the problem as a regional problem. We must prevent uh, the uh, entering of uh, gutter oil into the food chain anywhere. The Liberal Party is of the view that we must strike a balance between uh, facilitating business operations and a proper regulation system. We should set up a tracing mechanism. Initially, uh, the food safety ordinance should be amended so that the tracing and the regulation would be extended from food to uh, cooking oil, so that the whereabouts of the used cooking oil would be properly monitored and uh, documented. Uh, this is uh, quick and efficient, and regulation as source, uh, I believe, will, will be supported by the catering tray. And that's why I want to move uh, my amendment. If a tracing mechanism is uh, set up, well, when there's an incident, the government can trace the source and uh, take follow-up action to investigate, and it would be easier to uh, prosecute and, and penalize unscrupulous uh, recyclers. And this mechanism can also prevent problems and deter people from uh, committing a breach. The Liberal Party is of a view that a me tracing mechanism can uh, much better protect public health. Let me now turn to B5 biodiesel. Used cooking oil can be processed and turned into B5 biodiesel, which can be used as a uh, uh, vehicle fuel. In 2007-2008, or since 2007-2008, there has been no mention of using uh, biodiesel for vehicular fuels after that. So little progress has been made. In the first policy address of Mr. C.Y. Lowe, nothing or, or on this uh, is mentioned. Maybe we should u have our own tracing mechanism to trace the development of uh, turning cooking oil into biodiesel. We must uh, encourage the development of a biodiesel market, and the government should provide uh, incentives and uh, subsidies to encourage the different industries to use uh, biodiesel more extensively, because more processes are required in process in producing biodiesel, therefore the cost is about five percent over conventional fuel. According to the uh, logistics tray, if there's no uh, subsidy, the, the logistics tray would have little interest in using biodiesel. This is understandable. They are already uh, troubled by some uh, a lot of problems. If uh, we want to promote the use of uh, B5 uh, biodiesel by industries, there must be proper promotion. Apart from uh, hardware such as uh, 
petrol filling stations. We also must also have software to enable or and facilitate the use of biodiesel by industries. Liberal, the Liberal Party and I would like the current administrations to take follow-up action to fulfill the pledges made by the previous administration, which will not just let the issue go away. Using B5 biodiesel will uh, give uh, motorists one more choice, one more alternative, and uh, air quality can be improved, pollution can be reduced. Establishing a tracing mechanism or on uh, use cooking oil to people so uh, will be better assured uh, as regards public health. Secretary for the Environment, Mr. President, I'd like to thank Mr. Paul Chair to sponsor this uh, motion uh, in relation to the question of uh, eradicating gutter oil and take the lead to support biodiesel. Um, I would like to thank Mr. Wong Kok Heng, Tommy Chen, Stephen Ho, and Yik Chi Ming for proposing amendments. This motion involves both uh, environmental issues as well as food safety issues. Therefore, myself and Dr. Ko will be giving replies. First of all, about the use of B5 biodiesel by the government. The government has always been uh, taking the lead by resorting to green procurement. Uh, in this way, we can t uh, urge the business sector to follow suit and we can develop the recycling industry. This is also part of our response to um, the climate change. Uh, the Correctional Services Department, Police, Training Services Department, Marine Department and the Environmental Protection Department um, since February 2010 have been using uh, biodiesel in the heavy machines and a number of other installations. Uh, this part of the scheme uh, lasts for 16 months uh, using 3.5 million liters of biodiesel. B5 means that 5% of the fuel contains uh, biodiesel. It is a clean fuel. And then for the biodiesel, it can come from vegetable oil, waste cooking oil, or animal fat. It is a renewable energy. Biodiesel replacing fossil fuel means that we can reduce the carbon emission and we can help to tackle climate change. For the pilot scheme, I think it has been working well. For the engines, uh, they're compatible with the biodiesel. For the boilers, uh, uh, vehicles and launches used by the government uh, and making use of this biodiesel, we haven't seen any uh, problems. So we are preparing for a second stage of the pilot scheme so as to roll it out to other government departments. Stage two will last for two years and it is expected to start in the middle of this year. Uh, in relation to the motion itself, this is my reply. And uh, Mr. Paul Chair has said that um, the government should uh, take the lead to use biodiesel. In fact, this is exactly what we are doing within the pilot scheme. And then uh, using biodiesel so as to eradicate the source material for gutter oil. Well, for the pilot um, scheme, we have been using the cooked Cook, used cooking oil locally uh, as the feedstock. But my understanding is that so far we haven't got any hard evidence to say that there exists gutter oil in Hong Kong. And then for the biodiesel B5, um, the biodiesel, uh, biodiesel can come from animal fat or other source of vegetable oil. So I don't think the use of biodiesel B5 can be regarded as the ultimate solution of gutter oil. But then in the broad direction of having green procurement is uh, in favor of us. And the, the, for the other amendments uh, which seek to develop the recycling industry, again, we won't stop in our, we won't stop the momentum. The EPD has always been helping uh, the uh, biodiesel manufacturers and the catering industry to cooperate. Of course, we can always do more by way of helping with the liaison. As to the uh, recycling, um, I think the used cooking oil can be forwarded to the relevant manufacturers so that we can make good use of the resources. As you know that the Eco Park has got a uh, tenant using the 
um, waste cooking oil uh, to generate uh, biodiesel. Uh, to conclude, uh, we believe that Porsche's motion, as well as the amendments proposed, uh, all imply that uh, we need to promote the recycling industry. So I will be listening to the uh, debate together with Dr. Ko and come back with a further reply. Secretary for Food and Health. Uh, President, I thank um, Mr. Paul Chair uh, for moving the motion, and I thank uh, Mr. Wong Kwai, Mr. Tommy Jones, Stephen Ho, and Mr. Frankie Yik for the amendments. Uh, in fact, um, the uh, Food Safety um, Center for Food Safety under the FEHD has been monitoring the quality of cooking oil in Hong Kong to make sure that the quality of cooking oil is such. Um, that um, it is fit for human consumption. In fact, the CFS has um, um, taken about 310 cooking oil samples for testing, and the outcome um, is satisfactory. Last year, there were media reports that uh, um, there were suspected cases of substandard uh, cooking oil um, or used cooking oil being um, used by some eating establishments. We took action. We took samples from the supplier. We stepped up um, uh, inspection, and we also um, um, carried out safety checks and um, came up with um, um, uh, an actionable uh, provisional action level for uh, BAP. In fact, in January this year, we briefed um, members um, of uh, um, the panel on the matter. We are now um, going to listen very attentively to members' views, and um, I will be um, responding from the perspective of food safety. Thank you. Dr. Lu Wei Kuo. President, this motion touches on two issues. First, the recovery of cutter oil and processing. Second, the promotion of uh, biodiesel. Uh, used cooking oil is called cutter oil on the mainland. It means a lot of things. It means the oil extracted by waste, food waste. It also refers to the used cooking oil. There are unlawful elements producing cutter oil out of uh, used cooking oil, affecting public health. However, if uh, used cooking oil is properly recycled, it can be turned into biodiesel and uh, aviation fuel. According to the industry, in Hong Kong, we have not got any proper recycling in system or s uh, any system to uh, produce and market uh, biodiesel. As uh, used cooking oil fetches a higher price on the mainland, so used cooking oil collected in uh, Hong Kong is uh, mo mostly the shipped back to the mainland. Whether it will turn into cutter oil ultimately is a matter of concern. The government should look into the supply chain and to prevent uh, improper processing of used cooking oil so as to ensure safety of cooking oil use in Hong Kong. From the environmental protect perspective, if uh, used cooking oil is turned into biodiesel or other envir environmental friendly pro products, it would be the best way forward. The catering tray has a QLEMS scheme to promote quality catering. One of them is on uh, one of the criteria is on uh, the processing of. Uh, Use cooking oil. If used cooking oil is hand, handed over to reputable recyclers for proper reprocessing, they will get higher marks as an incentive. So, producer of uh, used cooking oil and recyclers can cooperate and recycle uh, used cooking oil properly. Today, I would like to say more on how the administration can and should. Uh, promote the use of biodiesel. Biodiesel can be processed through use cooking oil and other fatty uh, substances. Promotion of the use of biodiesel can uh, alleviate uh, global climate warming. And but in Hong Kong, we are still in a very preliminary stage. In the future, to develop the, and promote this 
sector, uh, a lot would depend on whether the government can come up with the right policy and incentives. Many countries have uh, mandated in their law that uh, the, the, the vehicular fuel they use uh, would have con to contain a certain amount of about diesel. For example, in 2012 to 13, the UK stipulates that about diesel should account for 4.5 percent. And EU has uh, set a target that by 2020, 20% 20 of vehicular fuel will come from renewable energy, including the biodiesel, electrical vehicles, and the hydrogen cell, and so on and so forth. In Hong Kong, the transport logistic uh, industry would like to use uh, biodiesel more extensively, but there's no requirement uh, set by the government. And there's no law to tie in with the use of biodiesel. The industry f uh, doesn't know what to do. According to the industry, in terms of fire safety, B5 biodiesel uh, is subject to the same requirements on fire safety as regards uh, diesel. But uh, the fresh point of uh, biodiesel is much higher, so it's safer. The strict requirements on uh, fire safety that affects the storage and uh, and use of biodiesel. In the budget, the FS uh, announced that a uh, uh, that ten billion dollars have been earmarked to adopt a two point approach to phase out commercial diesel vehicles of uh, Euro four stage or older. So there's a big market for biodiesel. Mr. President, in the foreseeable future, one possible use uh, for the biodiesel will be to use it as an aviation fuel. The Netherlands has announced that uh, biodiesel will be used for its uh, airliners and biodiesel has also been uh, included in the uh, carbon emission trading platform by the EU. Carbon emissions uh, will be regulated starting from 2012, and uh, excess would attract uh, an aviation carbon emission levy. But because of strong objections from other countries, this plan has been shelved for one year. Hong Kong is an aviation hub. We should plan ahead and make preparations. Otherwise, our uh, advantages as an aviation hub cannot be maintained. Mr. President, the administration sh should enhance its uh, green procurement policy and take the lead to use biodiesel. On top, he must have long term planning to take care of uh, land provision. In 2016, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge uh, will be commissioned. The uh, airport authority is uh, going to build a third runway, so the administration should uh, do the planning earlier, so as to provide for various facilities for the uh, storage, and uh, land should be reserved in the vicinity of uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge landing points for the storage of biodiesel. So, so that we can make sure that uh, the uh, increasing demand of the aviation uh, industry for biodiesel can be met. So I submit. Mr. Kuo Wai Kiao, Mr. President, gutter oil, which is a carcinogen, has caused public concern. It also affects our reputation as a gourmet paradise. Although the incident turned out to be a false alarm, but uh, during the incident, uh, the restaurants uh, listed in the report were subject to a necessary uh, panic. And if, even if the used cooking oil is shipped to another place and turned into gutter oil, it's not something that we would like to see to protect public health. The FGU supports the motion to use insofar as the use of biodiesel on a, an extensive scale. We should also have a proper regulatory system. There should be uh, 
incentives which tackle the problem at source so that the recovered cook used cooking oil can be turned into something useful. At present, recycling in Hong Kong is not regulated. Anyone can open, can uh, start a business and uh, recover used cooking oil from any restaurant. And we don't know the whereabouts of the used cooking oil. And uh, unscrupulous businessmen can uh, therefore uh, ship the used cooking oil out of Hong Kong and turn it into cutter oil. It's estimated that uh, in the Hong Kong annually we produce 22 million liters of uh, used cooking oils. Half will be shipped out of Hong Kong. Only two to three million liters will be turned uh, into biodiesel locally. The others uh, cannot be accounted for. The government should uh, implement a regulatory system and inform the public where the used cooking oil has gone so as to avoid unnecessary uh, worries. Mr. President, apart from tackling the problem as source, some other members have also suggested that we should uh, increase the usage of uh, biodiesel. In government's procurement agreements, uh, biodiesel is uh, utilized by some government departments. That's good. And uh, I hope the uh, pilot scheme can continue. But the pilot scheme alone cannot uh, provide a sufficiently big incentive to use biodiesel. The market is still very small. A few days ago, in a panel meeting, we discussed whether local vessels uh, should be asked or should be allowed to use biodiesel. The government department's concern said uh, it was in fact allowed, allowed, but biodiesel is more expensive than diesel, and there's no incentive to promote this in the industry. That's why this council should uh, speak out from um, the experience in other countries. Some subsidies should be provided to make up for the difference of uh, cost so that biodiesel produced can be properly utilized. Mr. President, I'm referring to overseas experience here. Say, in Germany, diesel vehicles must use B5 biodiesel, and there are other complementary measures. There are 1,900 sales outlets for biodiesel. Annually, they sell 2.1 billion liters of biodiesel. According to the EPD in Hong Kong, we have 130,000 diesel vehicles. And according to some green groups, if all diesel vehicles in Hong Kong use B5 biodiesel, we can reduce emission of uh, 129,000 uh, greenhouse gases, CO2. It's a 2% of the total emission of uh, greenhouse gases. Local biodiesel is now uh, exported to the extent of 90%. Transportation uh, would uh, involve uh, carbon emission. If we can uh, use more locally and reduce export, and at the same time, we can reduce the importation of fuel from other places. Carbon emission would be reduced uh, significantly. And from the economic and employment perspective, use more extensive use of biodiesel can promote the development of uh, green, the in green industry and create more green jobs. And uh, we have already uh, asked for the diversification of our industries, and this can be a part of it. Biodiesel is not very attractive at present, mainly due to the cost differential, as some members have pointed out. There's a difference of 5 to 10 percent in cost. And if the government provides the incentive to, to support the use of biodiesel, the usage of biodiesel can be promoted, promoted more wi uh, widely. And there is uh, 
a lack of sufficient outlets. More outlets should be established for biodiesel so that users can uh, gain access to biodiesel more easily. When the market responds to the increasing demand and if the profit is uh, more than that in the case of uh, selling used cooking oil to the unscrupulous recyclers then uh, they would be more inclined to turn used cooking oil into biodiesel and we can uh, then stop the illegal practice of turning used cooking oil to the gutter oil. Thank you. Mr. Gary Chan, thank you, President. Uh, this motion um, is about gutter oil and biodiesel. In fact, Mr. Steve um, Ho from the DAB has already stated the DAB's position on um, the recycling of used cooking oil. I would now like to say something um, uh, about biodiesel from an environmental perspective. I can remember that in 2009, uh, we had a discussion in the um, Environmental Affairs Panel on the use of biodiesel. I um, chaired the meeting of the panel on behalf of Ms. Audrey Yu. And I can remember that uh, members at the meeting all supported wider use of biodiesel in Hong Kong. And in fact, I uh, um, met a company um, involved in the production of biodiesel. And the company said that there were two main problems. First of all, there was an effective channel to um, recover um, used cooking oil. And second, um, there were no um, uh, really um, sale outlets. So uh, those were the two main problems. Um, in, uh, in, in relation to the use of biodiesel. And I think these two problems still exist. It's true that in Hong Kong, there are three factories producing biodiesel. But then at the same time, they have difficulties recovering and collecting used cooking oil. These factories have to compete against each other, and they have to com also compete with exporters of used cooking oil. And also, um, the recy uh, recovery of used cooking oil is not mandatory. Um, recovery is done by the private companies. Uh, supply is most unreliable. And so it's difficult to produce um, biodiesel uh, in a manner that would um, give steady supply to the market. And then the government doesn't require our petrofilling stations to sell biodiesel or supply biodiesel. Oil companies proceed from their own commercial interests. Now, if um, petrol filling stations are to provide um, or supply biodiesel, then the oil companies will have to construct the storage tanks. And as a result, oil companies uh, would prefer not to sell or supply biodiesel. Oil companies may not want to um, take money out of their own pockets to um, promote environmental protection. And also, the business may be um, loss incurring. And as a result, we don't have too many petrol filling stations supplying biodiesel in Hong Kong. Has the government done any promotion? Um, I think the answer is yes. but. Um, the amount of work done is um, very small. Uh, biodiesel uh, was supplied to government departments starting only last year, and this scheme will only last for 16 months. And not all government departments are involved in this um, scheme. FSD and also the um, the vehicle fleet under the FEHD um, do not use biodiesel. And if um, the government um, can't set a good example, then how can it convince the public to make wider use of biodiesel? Uh, I think that uh, if the government isn't taking the lead to uh, protect the uh, environment, how can it expect the uh, public to follow uh, suit?
So I think the government hasn't、um, done enough to promote our green industries. Now,、um, when we talk about、uh, green concepts, the government every time tells us that、um, it supports environmental protection and it、um, um, has in place some trial schemes. Trial schemes only, President. But then when we talk about extending the trial schemes、uh, to cover the entire territory, they will say these are commercial decisions, commercial operations, and the government can. Not um, help um, private enterprises do business and make profits, and as a result,、um, the private sector is、uh, is not interested in investing in green industries. And if we can't develop our green industries, we can't provide jobs、uh, for the people, and also、uh, there will be um, um, continuous pollution.、Um, To、um, Hong Kong people, so it's really a、uh, lose lose situation. So government can't just say that it supports environmental protection; it must take concrete action. Um. In fact,、um, no new measures are、um, mentioned in the policy address about、uh, improving air quality.、Uh, nothing is mentioned about electric vehicles. I think,、um, apart from、um, uh, promoting the use of biodiesel, so there are other ways to try to improve air、uh, quality. For example,、um, introduction of electric vehicles. I understand that some countries would like to introduce electric. Taxis into Hong Kong. I think this is a piece of good news. But let me tell the secretary that if、um, you want to see an improvement to roadside quality, you have to promote the use of biodiesel and electric vehicles, and also you have to provide、um, charging stations. At the moment, there are only about a thousand、uh, such、um, uh, recharging stations. If we can't have more such stations, then we, we can't、um, make wider use of electric vehicles. Miss Sit Ho, thank you,、uh, President. There are many eating establishments in Hong Kong, and they use a lot of cooking oil on a daily basis. But then, concerning. Uh, I want to say that there is a great discrepancy between the amount of、uh, oil imported and the amount of used cooking oil exported. I understand that, of course,、um, some of the cooking oil、um, uh, has been absorbed by by the food. Those who cook at home、um, know this situation. But then I want to say that the discrepancy is、um, really too big,、uh, and it can't be explained. And also, with regard to、um, collection of used cooking oil locally, I mean the price and also the price of um, 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 the the recycling. I think.、Um, Again, there is a big difference, and I'm worried that used cooking oil will ultimately become. Um, Gutta oil. I think、um, there are, are three levels at which we can achieve a win-win situation. First of all, food safety. We now do not want the used cooking oil to be exported、um, to cause harm to uh, people um, um, living in nearby regions, and we do not want、um, used cooking oil to come back to our Hong Kong-style cafes. And then second. The secretary for the environment、uh, keeps advocating turning、uh, waste、um, into energy. Now, previously,、um, we didn't know how to make use of used cooking oil, but now we know that、uh, used cooking oil can、uh, become renewable energy. So why aren't we promoting the use of renewable energy、uh, using used cooking oil? And then we,、uh, I think we we must not allow the export of used cooking oil to the mainland to cause harm to um, um, our mainland com、uh, compatriots. And we must, and we should also promote recycling of used cooking oil to provide、um, jobs in Hong Kong. So. In fact, this is um, um,、uh, an act of、uh, loving Hong Kong and loving the country. Previously,、uh, when、um, there was no、um, recycling and recovery of used cooking oil,、um, I knew as a district councillor that there were、um, um, cook food stalls or eating establishments.、Um, 
pouring um, used cooking oil and water into the uh, storm water drains. And in fact, as a district councillor, I um, um, took a look. Um, 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 and so, um, the color of curry and also when it rains, uh, or when it rained, um, uh, there was flooding of water inside the drains and as a result the street was so dirty that it had to be, the road surface had to be cleaned with detergent. Um, and I think um, it's important there are incentives to recycle used cooking oil. We need to provide um, some form of subsidy to recyclers, um, including um, 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 the, the making availability of sites. And also we should have a tracking system and a licensing system to trace where the used cooking oil has gone to. In fact, uh, there are a few uses for biodiesel. Firstly, biodiesel can be used to power vehicles, but our law only um, allows B5, um, in other words, 5% of uh, biodiesel content. And also, um, uh, biodiesel can be used in av aviation. Now, in fact, KLM um, also makes um, extensive use of biodiesel um, in its aircraft. And then now concerning combustion and heating in our industrial processes, again, a biodiesel can be used. Now, I, I believe the Secretary for Food and Health knows the operation of the hospital authority very well. Uh, as laundry has to um, carry out heating processes. In fact, the FSD and the police also operate uh, many laundries. So I think the government is in a position to purchase more about these. So, but you are only purchasing 3.5 million liters at the moment. Only 3.5 percent of the total use of um, fuel. So there is room for increasing the uh, purchase and use of about these. So. And then uh, there are many laundries in the uh, market, and they can also make use of about these. So, but then we don't have the infrastructure. You know that um, power, uh, energy supply is um, now done by the power companies and the uh, tank gas company, and so we will need um, um, extra infrastructure for the supply of power diesel. And so I hope that when the government negotiates the two power companies. Um, the um, uh, extension of the uh, franchise, um, they should be asked to uh, use renewable energy like wind energy as well as biodiesel. But of course, I hope that um, uh, if you ask the two power companies to step in, that should not be, be at the expense of the business of the small recyclers. We don't want to see a monopoly in this area. And in fact, um, the uh, recycling of used cooking oil can uh, um, create a lot of job opportunities, transportation, manufacturing, and uh, um, middle management posts can also be created. I hope that um, the um, government can think out of the box. Um, when it comes to the use of biodiesel, so other words, the uh, gutter um, uh, oil may be exported, and then they uh, then the oil may come back to our uh, Hong Kong style cafes, and as a result, uh, Hong Kong people's health will be harmed. Mr. Wu Chi Wai, Mr. President, today we talk about biodiesel. Of course, we hope that the administration will promote the use of biodiesel. The use of biodiesel will improve the air quality, reduce air pollution, and we can also reduce the chance of improper disposal of um, used cooking oil, uh, which will just go down the drains or go to the landfills. When we talked about the recycling of glass bottles, we said that uh, we should be careful about um, the destinations of the recycled uh, glass bottles. We didn't we don't want to export waste. So we we'll have to set out clearly what can be done, what shouldn't be done. So we need to have a back engine. Uh, we need to have a 
a glass uh, bottle manufacturer so as to make use of the recycled uh, glass bottles. In relation to the waste cooking oil or used cooking oil, I think we are faced with um, unfair competition. On the mainland, they offer a high price to collect the used cooking oil, maybe not just from the mainland, maybe from all over the world. It shows that for used cooking oil, it has a price. And for this price, when compared with the heavy inve investments needed to run a biodiesel plant, it is a kind of operation cost. So for the administration, if we do monitor the uh, whereabouts of the used cooking oil, if we don't trace the used cooking oil, then the gutter oil will one day come back to Hong Kong and enter the food chain of Hong Kong, posing a lot of food safety risk. On the other hand, it is about the overall policies. That is, whether we are determined to assist the recycling industries, especially those who are willing to invest in the green industries. Whenever we talk about the green industries, collection, of course, is a problem. But ultimately, it's a matter of whether there's a future for the green industry. Now, on the Internet, I know that there is this ASB, which is willing to invest hundreds of millions of dollars, hoping that in a year or so's time, uh, they can produce 100,000 tons of biodiesel. But then it is facing a big problem. How it can be sure that there will be sufficient use cook oil, cooking oil as the feed stock? If the government is not to do anything about it, then the investment may not be fruitful. In three years' time, uh, when the site is uh, to be um, uh, when, when the tenancy agreement comes to an end, then the investor may have to leave. So in Hong Kong, we have done a lot to encourage recycling. So if there is a commercial enterprise which is willing to make the investment, if the only problem is the lack of monitoring and lack of monitoring uh, on the part of the government so that we can't trace the used cooking oil, then it is not good. And in fact, we are aiding and abetting in the transportation of used cooking oil to other places which will become gutter oil. I think we have a responsibility to deal with the problem. We need to think afresh. While we trace the uh, whereabouts of the used cooking oil, we have to ask ourselves this question. Have we done our best? And then for the investors in the recycling industry, do they have adequate channels to collect the used cooking oil uh, generated locally? And of course, uh, is there a market for the used cooking oil turned into biodiesel? Uh, Mr. Wong, the SEN, uh, is very encouraging, and he said that uh, he has some pilot schemes. But can we really make use of the biodiesel in Hong Kong? There is a handful of biodiesel investors. They have set up plants in Hong Kong to produce the biodiesel. But is there a market for the biodiesel locally so that it can become one of the fuels? If there isn't a market, it means that Hong Kong as a society has to pay a high price because the biodiesel has to be sent to European countries, for example, but then that would incur a long distance and transportation costs. For the European countries, they have already passed a law to make sure that their motor fuel will uh, make use of a certain percentage of biodiesel. Now, Hong Kong is a modern society. We need to develop in such a direction. For the past decade or so, I've been told time again that uh, the administration attaches a lot of importance to environmental protection as well as our green industries. If we can be convinced that it is more than slogans, not backed up with any financial resources, then perhaps, for example, when it comes to government transport, and since the EPD has already studied the matter, and B5 biodiesel can be used in the government's fleet, then perhaps 
we should think about the duty of the government to apply it to the government fleet, so as to tell people that the government is willing to use B5 biodiesel, and then we can take the lead. We can um, set the pace for the application of B5 biodiesel. So for Port Chair's motion, as well as the amendments proposed by other members, well, I think today we have a very interesting motion. Uh, we haven't got anyone objecting to the idea in the motion. I think uh, since I have become an electrical member, I have seldom seen this. Now we have such a broad consensus. If the government is still dragging its feet, then it shows that the government uh, hasn't done its job. So in a moment, when the administration is to give a reply, please tell us what sort of policies there will be and what sort of strategies there will be to monitor and trace the whereabouts of the used cooking oil so that it will be brought under uh, a, a strict um, um, control so that there is a future for our biodiesel. Thank you. Mr. Peter Jiang, Mr. President, for today's motion, it is about eradicating gutter oil and taking the lead to support biodiesel. I think the two should be dealt with separately. There shouldn't be a causal relationship, otherwise we are mixing things up. First, emergence of gutter oil. Last year, Wing Hing uh, oil supplier and also um, there was another uh, oil supplier from the mainland were found to be providing problematic oil. It was generally termed as gutter oil, but what it was said was that Wing Hing got some peanut oil and vegetable oil from Bei Dai Fang and then they were blended and then uh, supplied to a dozen of uh, eateries and carcinogens were found after testing the oil. Uh, the result has caused a lot of alarm among the public. Well, the problem is for the source of oil from Bei Dai Fang, is it uh, safe? Uh, we have to follow up on the FHD's uh, investigation. We want to know whether there are loopholes in the uh, surveillance program. We must plug the loopholes to safeguard public safety. In Hong Kong, actually, we haven't got the gutter oil uh, found on the mainland. There is oil obtained from the gutters, or oil uh, used, um, uh, oil coming from used uh, cooking oil. We haven't got something as unscrupulous as that because Hong Kong is, after all, a civilized society. We have the rule of law and. Uh, for the idea of biodiesel, when compared with the general diesel, indeed it is a greener fuel, it is safer, and it has a lubricant nature, and it is biodegradable. A EU report has pointed out that after adding 20% of biodiesel to general diesel, the RSP can be reduced by 14%. And then uh, SO2 can be decreased by 70%. As members have uh, mentioned, KLM for the first time last year used biodiesel uh, to fly a intercontinental passenger flight for a long distance. Well, in fact, the mainland is all, uh, the UK has also faced the problem of gutter oil. Uh, every year, they generate between 50 and 90 million litres of waste cooking oil. There is a law to say that the uh, catering industry must dispose of it responsibly, but a lot of them still goes down the drain, causing a hygiene problem. Moreover, for the UK, they are also faced with the pollution control measures from the EU. Therefore, in recent years, they have relied on fiscal measures to encourage the establishment of biodiesel establishments. In fact, in London, about a thousand Taxi drivers are using such low emission biodiesel. Of course, biodiesel still accounts for a very small percentage of the total fuel used.
3.1% only in the year 2010. There are also some operational difficulties, but then the British government has a clear direction. It is in support of the development of biodiesel. It is not regarded as part of the industrial policy. Rather, it is an environmental issue. It is a issue of quality of life. Therefore, to me, if we support the development of renewable energy, it shouldn't be regarded as an economic issue. Rather, it should be regarded as an environmental protection issue. For Hong Kong, we rely on the importation of fuels. Uh, we are highly developed. Um, Biodiesel cannot on its own meet the demand for fuel. Uh, I think at most we can only have a mitigating effect. In fact, in Hong Kong, the question lies with energy conservation. In other words, we should maximize the efficiency. In other words, we need to develop this fifth energy after fossil fuel and, uh, and nuclear energy and fossil fuel, coal, etc. I think we should do this more instead of developing another form of energy. Otherwise, we're putting the cars before the horse. However, I found that the government hasn't done much here. Friends of the Earth has found that in 2008, the scheme of control agreement was signed with the um, power companies. If energy efficiency can be achieved, then in fact, Hong Kong Yi and the COP have helped the consumers to save 3 million units and 12 million units of electricity, amounting to 0.03% and 0.04% of the total generation. Then they can have an extra 0.02% as a reward. Um, the Friends of Earth um, uh, had an energy-wise campaign in the year 2012, and as a result, they were able to save 52 million units of electricity, much more than the power companies. So I think the scheme of control agreements request uh, is just window dressing. Even if the power companies cannot meet the requirements, cannot achieve the targets, they are not subject to any penalties. And HKD has never uh, attained this very low level of requirement. I think we should break the monopoly. We should have more participants in the energy market so that the power companies as well as the public organizations will take a keener interest in energy conser uh, conservation and raising the energy efficiency. And we should also have a reasonable level of tariff. Does anyone member wish to speak? Mr. Porcher, you may now speak on the amendments. The speaking time limit is five minutes. Mr. President. Well, the amendments are in one direction. They are just uh, pro proposing improvements to my motion. I support all of them. I have nothing more to add. Secretary for the Environment. Mr. President, once again, let me thank the many members who have moved the motion and proposed the amendments. I would like to speak to a number of uh, main points. First of all, the requirement of a regulatory system to monitor the work of the local recyclers. Many members have said that perhaps we should step up the regulation of the recycling of waste cooking oil. We've been monitoring closely the development of this industry. Of course, when they operate, they have to meet requirements like the provisions under the Air Pollution Control Ordinance. However, if members suggest that we need to have a tracing system and then regularly we disclose the data concerning the collection of waste cooking oil, I'm afraid that it means that the producers, it means tens of thousands of hotel food uh, factories and the uh, eateries to meet the new requirements. 
And please note that it, in this way, it means that their business operations will see an escalation or an increase in the cost. Mr. Tommy Cheung has already referred to this point as to the differences in the oil. It is a matter of uh, 5 to 10 percent. And then, of course, we need to consider the consequence of regulating it. Uh, some of the recycling activities may be affected. Therefore, we believe that at this stage, say for example, take the chemical waste as an example. The waste generators have to be registered, the recyclers have to be licensed, and they have to meet certain statutory requirements when they handle the chemical waste, like packaging, labeling, storage, transportation, etc. Um, in other words, there will be a cost for the society to bear. Now, if we legislate to regulate the use of waste cooking oil as to whether it should be done via legislation, I think we need to understand that the used cooking oil isn't a hazardous waste. It is not the um, international practice to restrict its export. Of course, we are green. We want to encourage the development of green industries. We need to cut down on carbon emission. But then there may not be an absolute case for legislation to regulate such a product. Of course, in terms of environmental protection, we want to support the development of this industry. For example, vehicles should make greater use of the biodiesel. The EPD, since 2003, um, with the help of the Hong Kong U, has been exploring the feasibility of using biodiesel as a motor fuel. The outcome is positive. In terms of reduction of pollutants, yes, biodiesel is performing quite well. However, before we actually launch it, we have to deal with the question of compatibility. On the basis of the outcome of this research, we have liaised with the motor vehicle suppliers. Generally speaking, they say that B5 as a biodiesel would be acceptable. But they are also worried that other than 5%, um, if um, the percentage is to be raised, there would be questions of compatibility in relation to certain engines. In year 2007, we looked at the impact of the biodiesel on the engines of the motor vehicles. In year 2009, we have already um, amended the air pollution control uh, vehicular fuel um, ordinance so that vehicles may use biodiesel so as to be sure about the quality of the biodiesel. And since 2007, uh, it will be duty. It has been duty free. And we have been encouraging the use of biodiesel as motor fuel for those who are interested to set up retail outlets. Uh, we have been providing the relevant information, liaising with the government departments to help them to set up retail detail, uh, outlets. The government has been taking the lead, and through green procurement policies, we have been um, joining this scheme. And the first pilot scheme has seen the use of biodiesel on a large scale. Of course, we are now preparing for a second stage so that more departments will join the scheme to use this clean fuel. Of course, you need to understand that promotion of a clean field among government departments will be subject to certain restrictions. We can't do it overnight. Currently, five government departments are using it, but not across the board or fully. Uh, now, in relation to the uh, oil supply points, not all of them can supply B5. Therefore, it's only for those vehicles that can have access to the oil tanks of the government can join the pilot scheme. 120 um, police vehicles, five launchers, and four generators and 12 boilers are covered under the scheme. 3.5 million litres of biodiesel has been used and then accounting for 8% of the Euro 5 fuel. 
um, the details of the second stage will be struck out later on. Uh, but then basically, uh, we are looking at doubling the amount to be used. Um, members have wondered whether we can consider mandating the use of biodiesel as a motor fuel. Technically, it is feasible, but then biodiesel, when compared with the current motor fuel, it may be more expensive. We found that it may be between 5 and 10 percent more expensive. Therefore, we have to look at the question of affordability on the part of the motorists. Of course, um, for the market, we have to look at the question of demand and supply. We need to be sure of a steady supply. And then mandating the use of biodiesel as motor diesel may not have a direct relationship with the collection of waste cooking oil. We are subject to the requirements of the World Trade Organization. We can't say that the biodiesel must come from the local waste cooking oil. In fact, a biodiesel plant may import the waste oil from other places and process it, or they can simply import directly the finished products of biodiesel. Of course, importation of such uh, biodiesel from overseas will involve carbon emission, and it will um, have a discounting effect on the environmental protection outcome. Uh, all in all, uh, we are in line with the broad direction. We will be having more supportive measures. We'll have the green procurement policy. But as far as resorting to legislative exercise, I think we need to consider it in greater details because of the cost involved. Thank you. Secretary for Food and Health. I thank um, uh, Mr. Paul Chair and the members um, who have um, moved amendments to the motion. I would like to um, um, talk about um, our work. Um, I want to say that the Center for Food Safety and the FEHD monitors the quality of cooking oil in Hong Kong. The CFS uh, ensures um, that um, the um, uh, cooking oil is um, fit for human consumption. In fact, between 2011-2012, uh, over 300 samples have been um, um, taken for testing and um, metal um, contaminants and other um, uh, and also uric acid coloring matters, microtoxins and uh, um, have been tested and uh, the uh, testing results are satisfactory. In fact, uh, our understanding is that um, mainland authorities are also looking at ways to um, um, test for gutta oil, but then in our food surveillance program, we um, do have um, um, investigations. We have, uh, in fact, uh, taken over 60 samples from the market for um, BAP uh, content, and in fact, the results were uh, satisfactory, and the results were announced in November 2012. At the end of last year, there were media reports that there were suspected cases of um, substandard oak cooking oil. We took samples and um, carried out tests, and the three um, um, samples were found to be problematic uh, under the BAP test, 14 MCG, 16 MCG, and 17 MCG respectively, exceeding the um, state safety standards. CFS has already asked the supplier to stop um, supplying the product and has asked for um, a recalling of the product. CFS has also um, taken more samples for BAP tests and has made use of uh, CAP 612 food safety ordinance, I mean that um, um, food tracking system under the ordinance to trace the source of the uh, su suspected substandard cooking oil and the distribution of such oil. We also uh, announced uh, the details of the um, um, incident in a timely manner to the public to allay their concerns. Now, although um, this is not a... a um, uh, food health problem to us. We have decided to step up um, 
the um, testing of cooking oil in our food and service program. Now, first of all, we um, have laid down an action level for um, BAP in cooking oil. After consulting um, uh, the experts, a, an action level of 10 mcg per kg for BAP in cooking oil has been laid down. And if the level exceeds 20 mcg, then there is public health concern. And the uh, CFS were according to CAP 132, uh, Section 54, Take Enforcement Action. And we also uh, mandate, uh, on a mandatory basis recall the product. Uh, and if the um, uh, BAP um, level is more than 10 mcg and less than 20 mcg, then the public health hazard is not great. But then CFS can still under CAP 132, Section 52, take enforcement action. Second. Um, uh, we will, uh, in fact, we've embarked on a dedicated um, study on cooking oil. The results were announced on the 1st of February, and all the samples were found not to be adulterated. And uh, out, of seven, out of these uh, 102 samples, 79 were found to have BAP, um, ranging from the content of um, 0 0.1 to 8.8 .8 mcg. Uh, still, it's less than 10 mcg per kg as um, recommended by the consultants. And then, um, uh, concerning another um, contaminant, we've um, also uh, discovered that um, um, the, um, um, the relevant safety standard has not been exceeded. And then uh, we've also um, inspected the premises of importers and distributors, and over 20 importers and distributors under the exemption for licensing arrangement are uh, um, um, trying to uh, put um, cooking oil into cans or bottles and the um, uh, sanitary conditions in these premises are found to be satisfactory, but of course we'll continue to step up inspection. And then we need to consider whether we should continue with the exemption from licensing regime for um, the um, uh, putting of uh, cooking oil into cans and bottles. And I understand that the FEHD is still analyzing um, the relevant information. So these measures should be adequate to ensure the safety of our cooking oil and the public uh, not be worried. But then um, members have spoken as well as um, members who have moved the motion and the amendments have um, said that they do not want to see um, used cooking oil re-entering the food chain. And they also want to promote the uh, the use of um, or wider use of biodiesel. Now I want to say that eating establishments should try to submit uh, their used cooking oil to qualified recyclers for the production of biodiesel. Um, if eating establishments uh, are willing to do this, um, as um, suggested by Mr. Tommy Chung, we will be most willing to work with the catering industry, encouraging eating establishments to submit their used cooking oil to qualified recyclers. And then um, concerning um, departments under our bureau, including the hospital authority, how we can encourage them to make more uh, use of biodiesel, we need to have technical assessments. Mr. Um, Wang Kam Singh, Secretary for the Environment, has said that concerning the storage of biodiesel and also the technology and whether the um, plants and equipment are compatible with biodiesel. If we can resolve all these technical problems, then uh, I will um, um, encourage departments under my bureau to actively make more use of biodiesel. Mr. Wong Ko Heng, you can now move your amendment. President, I move that Mr. Porcher's motion be amended. I now propose a question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Mr. Wong Ko Heng to Mr. Porcher's motion be passed. I now call upon Mr. Frankie Yik to move an amendment to Mr. Wong Ko Heng's amendment. Mr. Frankie Yik. Mr. Frankie Yik is not in the chamber. Uh, Mr. Tommy Chow? Any problem? Uh, quorum. Well, Mr. Tommy Jung 
request a head count. Mr. Frankie Yick, you may now move your amendment. President, I move that Mr. Wong Kok Heng's amendment be amended. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Mr. Frankie Yick to Mr. Wong Kok Heng's amendment be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think. 
the major the question is agreed by majority respectively of each of the two groups of members, that is those returned by FCs and those returned by GCs through direct elections who are present. I declare the amendment passed. I now put a question to you, and that is that uh, Mr. Wong Kok Heng's amendment as amended by Mr. Frankie Yik to Mr. Paul Jair's um, motion be passed. Would those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members, that is, those returned by FCs and those returned by GCs through direct elections who are present. Let the Kata Amendment passed. Members have already been informed, as Mr. Wong Kok Heng's amendment has been passed, Mr. Tommy Chung has withdrawn his amendment. Mr. Stephen Ho, as um, the amendments of Mr. Wong Kok Heng and Mr. Frankie Yeager have been passed, you may now move your re revised amendment. President, I move that. Sorry. President, I move that. Mr. Paul Jess motion as amended by Mr. Wong Kok Heng and Mr. Frankie Yeager be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose the question to you, and that is that Mr. Stephen Ho's amendment to Mr. Paul Jess motion as amended by Mr. Wong Kok Heng and Mr. Frankie Yeager be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by majority respectively of each of the two groups of members, that is, those returned by functional constituencies and those returned by geographical constituencies through direct elections who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Porter, you may now reply. You have 55 seconds. I'd like to thank the four members for moving their amendments and also other members for their speeches. Uh, it's uh, regrettable that we haven't heard any speech from the civic party, maybe they are too preoccupied for the, with the uh, press conference on uh, occupying the central. So this uh, motion is supported by the, all the parties here. Uh, the, actually, the motion is not about a causal relationship between the two the issues. We are just trying to turn uh, waste into energy. We hope the government uh, would uh, take the lead and uh, ask more government departments to use more uh, B5 diesel. They should not just look at the price, but uh, they should do something to help the, the local manufacturing industries. As we said uh, in uh, the 2010 uh, Climate Change Action Plan, we have already talked about uh, using uh, branding more extensively. There should be further study into uh, possible legislation. I now put a question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Mr. Paul Chair, as amended by Mr. Wong Kok Heng, Mr. Frankie Yik, and uh, Mr. Stephen Ho, be passed. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. Mr. Paul Chair claims the division. The division bell will be run for five minutes.
Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed. The results are displayed. FC members, 28 uh, present, or in favor of the motion. GC members, 25 present, 24. Yes, no uh, objection, no abstention. The question is agreed by a majority, respectively, of each of two groups of members. I declare the motion as amended uh, passed. Third member's motion, improving property management.